If you're a wedding or an event photographer and you shoot hundreds or thousands of photos at a time, you know the worst part of your job is actually editing those photos. And one of the most mind-numbing parts is culling, just going through each one of those images one by one and picking out the best ones and deleting the worst ones. And anything that you can do to speed up that process, taking away a click here or a click there, can add up to hours over the course of months or years of editing. And so today I have some very interesting software for you. This is a sponsored video video by Narrative Select, but for 99% of the people watching this right now, this software is going to be 100% for free. And this is just going to help you with that culling process. If you're used to editing in Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, you can still do that. This is just going to help you with that very first pass of all of the images to figure out which ones you want to edit in the next step. So here I have Narrative Select open. I'm going to choose a folder. And on my desktop here, I have images from my wedding. If you guys didn't know, I was actually a professional wedding photographer for like 15 years, but I don't have any of those photos here with me in Puerto Rico. So these are just some of the images from my personal wedding. I had a bunch of friends photograph my wedding for me, one of them being Reese Allen, check out his work. Now that was just around 250 raw files. It was almost instantaneous. This software claims that it can import 5,000 plus raw files in less than three seconds. If you've ever worked in Lightroom and you try to create those preview files, you know that can take a really long time. So again, anything that helps move this process along is going to save you a ton of time. Now this software is going to help you with three main things. One, it's going to tell you if your images are in focus or if they're blurry, it's going to tell you if your subject's eyes are closed and it's going to let you zoom in on their faces almost instantly so that you can quickly check focus and check expression so that you can once again cull through these images as quickly as possible. So I can tell that there's a problem with images in two different ways. One, I can click on the image, see it large, and I can see these two color marks under each face. Obviously there's a problem here because her eyes are closed, but then I also have this exclamation mark down here. And what this software is doing is it's looking at the timestamp on images. And if you've taken images back to back, it puts them in a group and then it will compare each one of those images and it will tell you the worst images out of those shots. And then the other great feature is over here on the right, you can click this icon here and it will show you a close up of your subject's face. Now, obviously in this particular shot, it's not totally necessary, but you will see when we start getting into group shots and people's faces are super small, normally in Lightroom, I'd be zooming in and moving around the shot, trying to look at each face, but this software makes it so much easier. Now, if I wanted to, I could trust the artificial intelligence 100% and I could just filter all of these images out without even looking at them. To do that, I could click on this filter button here and I could say, show me only the images that don't have warnings. And that's going to cut everything out with a red warning or a yellow warning. Now, to be perfectly honest, as a wedding photographer, I don't think I would ever trust a computer to tell me that an image should be deleted, especially if it's looking at things like closed eyes, because in many cases, people are closing their eyes out of joy or happiness, and they might be one of my favorite images of the entire day, and they don't have their eyes open. So let me show you how I might quickly cull through these shots. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the caps locks button and that is going to automatically advance to the next image once I rate an image. I know everybody does this a little bit differently. I don't really wanna move my hands around. So I'm going to delete images with a one star and keepers are going to be two stars. This one, obviously one star, not gonna keep it. I like that one. I like that one. Ah, uh, she looks a little crazy in that one. No, she looks great in that one, two stars. Here's where we can really see some benefit to the zooming in on the facial expressions on the right over here. I think my wife looks kind of weird and scared in this shot. So boom, one, going to skip that one. She also looks very uncomfortable there, but she looks great in that one. She looks great in that one. Obviously a mistake shot, a mistake shot. Look at how good this software does here. I mean, these are incredibly small people in this shot. It didn't pick out the lady in this shot here, but it did get the faces on these two guys and it zooms into them so that we can see it also is letting us know that we are nicely in focus here. I'll keep it, 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 I'll keep it. On these shots without faces, it's zooming in on the right and letting us know the level of focus that we have on these shots. And as you can see, the first two are a little soft. So I'm going to delete those, keep that one. I don't need more than one of those. And we'll keep that one. 
So obviously these two shots here, wildly underexposed, but even still the software was able to pick out faces. It's warning me that this first shot is worse than the second shot. It's telling me that my focus is actually better in the second shot, so I'll delete the first one, keep the second, just in case I can recover those uh, shadows when we get into Lightroom. Now for these group shots, this is where you're really going to save a ton of time because normally you'd have to zoom in and you'd have to start dragging around, looking at every single person's face to see if they're paying attention or smiling or their eyes are closed or whatever. Instead, this software is doing it for you. It's warning you that, hey, her eyes are closed. His eyes are closed over here. And what I can do is quickly cycle between these and look for an image that has no red. This is the first one that I've seen that has almost no red. Patrick over here, you can see his eyes are mostly closed. It says eyes barely open. So I think that's our best bet. Now, if we wanted to get really crazy, we could start grabbing faces from one image and combine them into another. You could do that by starring multiple images and planning to edit those later. But for me personally, I think this one looks good enough. This is the only one out of that group I'm going to keep. It's funny, as I cycle through more of these, I really feel like Patrick is sabotaging my wedding photos. I mean, <laughs> he is down here. And in every picture, it says <laughs> mid blink. That's just his face. <laughs> That's just what his eyes look like. And moving on to the shot of the girls here, again, it just makes it so much faster to quickly see red and go up. Oh, her eyes are closed, I need to delete that one. We've got a quick little series here where my wife is posing alone and the software is telling us that all of these images are good. I would say this one looks a little awkward so I'm going to delete that one, but we'll keep all the others. Now eh, maybe we'll delete that one also. Again, obviously we need to delete this one but the software is warning us, eyes closed and out of focus. And once again, we've got another warning. This is the worst of a series, and it absolutely is. Awkward facial expression, that's the keeper. Whoa, that's a bad one. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know it could do this. It can actually recognize when the subject is kissing. That is wild. And so maybe my fear that, hey, you know, it's going to try to delete passionate images with eyes closed was wrong it actually can recognize a kiss and most people close their eyes when they kiss. So definitely do not delete those. That's pretty crazy. So here the photographer's doing some test shots right before we do pose pictures at dusk. Obviously we have a few problems here. First of all, the image is out of focus. The software is warning us of that. It's giving us that yellow warning and saying this is out of focus, but it's also wildly overexposed. Hopefully in the future, the software will be able to determine that. And if an image is not salvageable, hopefully it'll give you that red warning in the future. So here we have shots where our eyes are closed perfectly. Oh, interesting. That's crazy. Okay, so it says the subject is looking down and posing. That's unbelievable. I, I honestly did not know the software could do that. So finally, here's an example of the software messing up when it comes to purposeful eyes closed or whatever. I don't love this picture, but I think this is a very genuine, realistic pose. And this is an image that if I was taking this for somebody else, I would not delete this image. The software is warning me that, hey, her eyes are closed in this shot, but I think it works for this particular shot. So this would be one that I would keep. And this is a, an example and probably the first example of why I would never trust software 100%. I personally would like to see every image uh, before I delete it. There's Peter Hurley being our uh, mobile light stand. I forgot he used to have crazy hair. I honestly have not looked at these wedding photos since like the week of our wedding. I have not opened these files since then. We have not printed a single one of our wedding photos. So it's kind of cool to see these again. Here we are posing in a tractor. Why? because it was there. And again, as we go through the reception here, you can see it's warning you when there are <laughs> images that are out of focus. Oh gosh, crazy, crazy night. So I think you get the idea. Once I go through calling, I usually like to go through a second time very quickly. So you can click on the filter button here and then edit from two stars and above, or however it is that you like rating your images. And then I go through them quickly one more time. Usually I can cull them down a little bit more. And then you need to send them over to your editing program to actually do the edits on your shot. You can click the ship button here and you can see it gives you different options. 
I use Lightroom Classic, so I would simply click that. So then you need to tell the software which files you actually want shipped over. And for me and the way that I was rating these, we want two star images and above. I don't have anything above two, but I would click ship 50 images and boom, everything is sent over to Lightroom. You can see that Lightroom is automatically opening up for us here. And you can see all of the images have been imported here, but the check boxes are only the files that we've rated two stars. Now, here's the best thing about the software. It's going to be free for 99% of you. If you look here at the pricing, we have a uh, free option and then the pro option. The free option has all of the same features as the pro option and it works for the first six projects every single month. Even at the height of my wedding photography business, I was usually shooting five or six weddings a month. Uh, so this software would have been completely free for me. If you ever shoot more than that, you could just do the month to month plan, which is just $18 a month. And if you own some gigantic studio and you're shooting tons and tons of events, you could pay $150 per year for this feature. But if you're shooting thousands of images and you're shooting groups of people and you're trying to decide is A or B better, which one of these is a little sharper, who has their eyes closed, whatever, this software will save you a few seconds each time you have to make one of those decisions. And over the course of an entire event or a month of events or a year of events, this software will definitely save you hours. It's free, you might as well check it out. I put a link in the description below.